The Bible says that God sent his word and healed them. Amen. It says that like the rain comes down from heaven, so does God's word come down. And he said, and it will not return unto him void. Amen. That means the word cannot return to God. And, and it actually says until it has accomplished what he sent it to do right. and accomplished all of his pleasure, all of God's pleasure. So we know that Jesus is the word. <clears throat> he was the word made flesh. He was sent from God. So the word was sent from heaven. He sent his word. He healed them. And then he returned to God. Is that right? So when the word made flesh returned to God, that means that it had to have accomplished all that it was sent to do and all God's will. So when he said it is finished, he was saying, as far as I can tell by the New Testament, he was saying, I have accomplished everything you wanted done. So that means it's done. Now, like we even said last night, we came to deliver the victory. We live in the victory. The victory is accomplished. Okay? That's why you never see, because everything Jesus did, he did, and get this, he did on credit. Because he had not yet, if you read Matthew chapter 8, it says that what he, he healed them all so that it would be fulfilled what the prophet Isaiah said, that he bore our infirmities, our sicknesses, our, de- our diseases. So if he did that, he said Isaiah had to be fulfilled. Jesus was fulfilling it. And so the fulfillment of what Jesus came to do was heal them all. Because it says he healed them all. So what Jesus came to do initially, he came to earth to accomplish total healing for every person on this earth. He didn't leave some undone. See, that's what we have to realize. What God is doing now is the echo of what Jesus did on the cross. It is fulfilled. It is done. So now we are seeing that. We believe it. And that's how you get saved. When you get saved, you believe what he did back then. And that it was for you. Healing is the same thing. Healing is exactly the same in that sense. Now the difference is now Jesus is supposed to have an army of people delivering that healing for people that don't even believe. Now think about that. So, and that's why... You see, when Jesus was on the earth, he fulfilled God's will. Basically, Jesus came and he told, at one time, he said, who do men say that I am? And they said all the you know, different people. But even Philip at one point says, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Philip, have I been with you so long? And yet you say, show us the Father? He said, don't you know the Father's in me and I'm in the Father? So if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Is that right? So Jesus, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, and into verse 2, it actually says that Jesus is the express image of God. That means the exact perfect representation. That means that Jesus left nothing out of the character of God unrevealed to us. He revealed all of God's will, his attitude, his personality. He revealed that to us. And then he said, Father, I have glorified your name. Well, the only name he ever used on earth for for his father was father. So the idea that he is a father also tells us his nature and character. What would a father do? Especially a father who was love. And so what we see in Jesus, Jesus said, I'm doing what I see my father do. Well, what do you see his father do? Heal them all. Isn't that right? And And here's the other thing. You never see Jesus praying for anyone. You never see him pray, Father, if it be thy will, heal this person. The only time if it be thy will is actually in somewhat in the Bible is when Jesus was in the garden. And then he was talking about, Lord, if it be your will, not my will, but your will be done. That's as close as it comes. But we've built it into something else many times. But when he says, if it be thy will, he said, Lord, not my will, but your will, which proves that Jesus had his own will, but it was submitted to the will of God. Amen. Okay, And it was in union with the will of God. And now, why did Jesus say that? Why did he say, take this cup from me? Nevertheless, if it be thy will. What did he say? He, he was right there at the, you know, almost on the cross. And he said, this ain't going to be fun. This ain't, if there's any other way we could do this, we'll do what? Redeem mankind. 
See, Jesus, the only time Jesus said anything about God's will in that sense, of, of the sense of, okay, if there's another way, let's do that, but not my will, but your will be done, was in relation to his redeeming man. Okay, you get that? You will never be in that position. Therefore, it is never, get this, in relation to healing, in relation to salvation, in relation to anything that Jesus bore in his atonement. It is, it is never God's will or you will never be in the position to say, if it be thy will. Amen. 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 Now, now, here's the problem. Some people don't know God's will. If you don't know God's will, then you're going to put an if in there. But when you know his will, what that does is it gives you the backbone to keep pushing through, keep going after it, keep going after it. You have to settle it and say, this is the way it will be because this is God's will. If there is any wiggle room in there, the devil will make sure he points it out to you and take you down that path. You have to be able to set yourself to say, this is the will of God. This is the way it will be. And I will not stop until it is so. Amen. Now, God has no one on this earth except Jesus' body to enforce God's will. But if we don't know the book, if we don't know the will of God, and the book is his will, if we don't know that, then we will always be guessing. And we will never have the strength to stand. And any good logic or reasoning, natural wisdom, earthly wisdom, devilish wisdom, is what the Bible says, will make its way into you. And then you start making excuses. 